Hi, I hope you're doing well. Today, I wanted to come in and talk about Pluto. Uh, I especially wanted to talk about the idea that Pluto is going to be moving into the gate 41 in um, on April 12th and the significance that that might have. Of course, you know, I can have as many ideas and concepts and musings about what I think is going to happen, but what will happen is going to happen at its own bidding. And and I'm just sort of providing some insights of things that sort of popped up in my um, in my mind as I sort of looked at Pluto. Now, keep in mind that, you know, this is really moving us into uh, the 2027 um, theoretical shifting of the global cycles. And um, and I, and although I really do believe that talking about 2027 is super important, I think that to unravel it as we go is even more important because then you're going to get all the pieces to the puzzle and you can kind of put them together in a way that sort of makes sense to you. I will be talking about 2027 in the future for certain because I think it's a really important a point in our lives um, that is going to uh, potentially shift a lot of things. But having said that, to really, you know, bring it home in a way where everybody can kind of get a, a concept of what it feels like or what we might see is really important to me as well. Now, nobody has to have any of that energy to really be impacted by how this shift is going to happen. Um, you know, anybody who has any type of abstract energy is going to have potential to be impacted as well. But in the long run, you know, uh, there's an old saying, you're either part of the play or you're part of the audience. You're always going to be involved in some way, in some form with how the transits are playing out in the world. And sometimes you're more involved and sometimes you're less involved and sometimes you're happy to be less involved. So if we look at the gate 41, um, you know, it's only going to be, Pluto's only going to be going into the gate 41 line one. That's all we're going to be getting for 2024. So it's really just a small taste. And Pluto is going to be in there for a very short time if you look at the orbit of Pluto, which is 248 years thereabouts. So we're only going to have a taste of this energy from April 12th, 2024 to May 23rd, 2024. So a very small time period. And I don't think it's coincidental that we have um, Neptune moving into the gate 25 on the 10th of April too, because these two planets work a lot together. You know, the whole concept is that Pluto go, uh, Pluto comes in after Neptune has done some dissolving and it starts to transform. So it's in other words, you could say Pluto is coming in to start to rebuild something that um, Neptune has started, uh, you know, has brought down. Um, you could say that it's like the construction uh, workers coming in after the demolition has happened. But again, with Neptune, it's not demolition. It's something that is... Um, you know, quietly being done uh, away from our eyes. And the one thing I will say about uh, Neptune is that I'm really expecting quite a, a big eye-opening experience for the world. Um, you know, all the things that we haven't seen, I feel like we're really going to start to get an inside view into all the happenings that have been happening away from our sight or hidden away from us. So that is something that I really feel is going to um, be impactful. But since we're talking about Pluto, let's um, get back to Pluto. And, you know, the perspective is this is the beginning of something new. And if you look at the gate 41, this is the initiating code on. This is the beginning of everything. Everything begins from the gate 41 through human design. So in other words, this is bringing a new cycle, a brand new cycle. The whole mandala begins with the gate 41 and it, you know, slowly chugs along, along, especially with Pluto. It takes 248 years to get around to a brand new beginning. So Pluto in the gate 60 is bringing limitations, the endings of, you know, things that no longer serve, but also teaching us that you know, having everything we need at all our fingertips as we have had is not actually good for us in a lot of ways because it stymies our creativity. If you look at the gate 60 and the opposition is the gate 56, it says creativity, um, experiencing, um, you know, life through the stories of the past, your stories. How did I used to do it? How did they used to do it really when you look at this type of global cycle? And really looking at and and really see looking at 
what can I do with what I have in my hands right now? And how can I use it in a way that maybe might even be innovative? Because the gate three, the whole 360 channel is this channel of mutation. This is genetic mutation as much as anything. But there's also going to be this idea of we are taking, you know, things from the 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 vat of mutation or the vat of what already exists, you could say, and putting them together in a way where we haven't seen them before. And right now we are in a deeply mutative type time of, of um, you know, a lifetime for all of us on planet Earth with Uranus in the gate 23. And we have Jupiter in the gate 23, and they're going to be conjuncting in the gate 23 line four in the future. Uh, not too long, uh, I believe on the 21st of April. So another impactful thing. The one thing I'm looking at, though, if we're moving forward into Pluto going into the gate 41, and I will jump forward to 2027 just for a little while, just to kind of show you some of the things that I've seen as we move forward is that we have um, in 2027, later in the year, we have Pluto um, and the North Node in the Gate 41 conjuncting in the Gate 41 Line 4, which says to me that this is an important line. It means something to where we're moving. Now, this time, you know, in 2024, we're going to get the Gate 41 Line 1. Now, keep in mind that because of the harmonics of all the lines, we have the first line and the fourth line are harmonics, you could say. So you have the first line is beginning to build a foundation. This is where you find security. This is for, where you have some level of fear because you're not sure about things. It's an inexperience, you could say, and that you are out there looking for knowledge to become a, an authority. You know, we can use all those keywords for all the first lines to become an authority in something. So you feel like you can go, you know, out into the world with the information that you have and it will it'll keep you safe, you could say. And then we move to the gate 41 line four, and we're moving into this foundational energy. This is energy that we, you've already built this foundation. You sort of know what you're doing. And now you're holding on to that dream. You're holding on to that positioning, knowing that this is your foundation. Now, this is a very fixed energy, the gate, the gate 41 line four. And so there's not a lot of wiggle room either way. But because of that, holding to your vision you know, there are certain people who have a vision in their life. And this is what this energy is really talking about. They have a vision in their life. They do it the way they want to do it. They continue to push forward with the way they want to do it. And it manifests into something that they never thought could be. Because anything that's coming from the gate 41 is going to take a lot of time to get up to the throat center. Now, if we look at Pluto in the gate 60, and sort of what we've been going through over the last couple of years, we know that limitation has been part of the process. But we also know that being creative with what you have in the moment is another part of the process. And this is almost like a preparation for when Pluto moves into the gate 41. Because, you know, if we look at the gate 60 being about limitation, and, you know, this idea that when you start to look at the limitations that you have in your life or whatever part of of the world you see and you start to say okay i'm going to be okay with this i'm going to be in this energy understand that i don't have every single thing that i want but i have what i need and i'm going to be okay with that and then this is where pluto can come in and level you up in the mutation that you are part of begins to take hold. Now, right now with Pluto in the gate 696, we are in a deeply mutative time because we know that Pluto is already looking at the gate 41. And so this is a deeply mutative time. This is a time where a lot of changes are happening. And again, as I've spoken about, I've spoken about before is this idea of really feeling that something is changing. Something is changing within you. Something changing in the world. Something is changing. Now we're moving on to the gate 41. And this is limitation as well. It's different, but it's all the same concept. The gate 41 is where it's called decrease. And this is where we are taking something that exists. And we're saying, okay, there's rotten 
branches on this tree. There's things that just are basically weighing it down. We need to make things lighter so that we can have more growth in the future. We need to make things more streamlined so we can have more growth in the future. And this is really what Pluto in the gate 41 is, is talking about. It's talking about what can we trim back so eventually we'll get more growth. It's like, I use this analogy a lot and I think it's really worthwhile because it does, in my mind, explain a lot in that it, um, you know, there, there are certain types of trees that you have to do a lot of um, trimming back in the fall. In the fall, you have to trim them back quite a bit, not only to allow more growth in the future, but also to protect it because it is there are things that are taking away from its growth potential. And that's kind of what we're looking at. at even in your life, are there things that are kind of holding you back, taking energy from you when you could be using it for something else? And that's the big question that the gate 41 is is asking us all are there things that are just time you know time wasters like social media for instance like we can go on and go through tiktok and go through those types of things and just spend hours of nothing really nothing because there's no productivity and that's okay because sometimes you just need to unwind and not be kind of busy with a multitude of things going through your mind and it can be mindless and it can you know take you out of that busyness but having said that it can eventually become some an issue where it isn't being just kicking back here and there it's it's more about uh, taking time that you could be d using to do something else whatever that is i mean it could be taking time from you going out in in nature and enjoying you know, the, the spring or enjoying fall or enjoying part of, you know, the beautiful world we live in. So if you look at the perspective that 70% of the population have open head centers, it means that there is a lot of us, me included, um, thinking about things that are not valuable for our lives, thinking about things that are not important. What is that saying? Um, somebody is living rent free in your, in your mind, you know, people, things that that don't matter to you that will never matter to you and yet you feel like you need to think about it or you need to spend time on it and this is you know really getting into that and saying okay what do you need truly to to get rid of because in the long run it is going to be so much better for you and I would say wherever you have Pluto transiting in your um, astrology chart, if you know that, that can give you even more clarity about the house that you're. it's transiting through. It can give you even more clarity about what you might want to look at where you're, you know, you're spending more energy in there than you should be. And to streamline is going to make it better. And the opposition to the gate 41 is the gate 31. And this is leadership. And, you know, in a global perspective, this is democracy. This is democratic leadership. Um, but from a personal perspective, this is about being a leader in your life. Leading yourself to the places that are best suited for you because you de you deserve it. But ultimately, you're here on planet Earth. Everybody deserves to have the best that they can have. We all have a destiny. We all have a trajectory. And truly, to, to get the best we deserve this is an opportunity to say, okay, to get the best, the most beautiful blossoms on my tree, I really need to get rid of this dead wood, this extra stuff that no longer serves me, that was once beautiful. Maybe it had roses on it. Maybe it was part of the, the tree that was really growing well or the bush, but now it's no longer serving me. And this is really talking about where do I want to go in the future where am I going to put my energy so I can get the best in my life and the best that I deserve? The gate 41 line four is called correction. And it says successful adaptation to limitation. So this is, again, looking at the perspective of relationships. Always with the fourth line, it is about this idea of um, uh, your groups, your social interactions or your social network, that type of thing. And this could even include uh, social media for sure. Uh, because the fourth line is energy that is um, kind of fueling this particular global cycle, the first line and the fourth line. So we are in a global cycle of fear and also 
um, this idea of social networking to protect ourselves. So, I mean, that's like in a nutshell, but you know, it is this idea of deciding what is important to you and what isn't. And then with a North node conjuncting Pluto, it is really talking about moving into the future. The other thing about 2027 that is related to the gate 41 is, is like, I, I remember looking at um, 2027 years ago. And, and I said, well, the gate 41, you know, if it's so important, um, why is it showing up in 2024? I mean, it doesn't really feel like 2027 is that like, you know, pivotal. What is, what is the reality? Well, having seen that Pluto is going to conjunct with the North node, that's not something that's happening all the time. So if you look at Pluto connecting with the nodes, it's going to do that, you know, every 17 to 18 years or, or a nodal cycle. Um, actually the North node, it's going to be half of that for, uh, the South node because they're always in opposition. But if you're looking at Pluto being in Aquarius, where it will be conjuncting with the North node, that brings a brand new positioning because it's going to only happen every 248 years. So it is kind of an impactful time and it can, um, herald in world changes and a lot of things happening, which, you know, sort of is what we're looking at. Um, how that unfolds, we will see. And, you know, I will talk about more as, as um, you know, as this unfolds, I will talk about more as we go forward. Um, the other perspective that we have is we have the detriment for Pluto in the um, gate 41 line six coming back into play in 2027 as well, which is another thing that is kind of aligning with this 2027 timeline. And um, I think that if you look at um, the 2027, you know, what what is supposed to happen is, you know, moving into a new global cycle and we are supposedly moving into the cross of penetration. Like as much as we have the cross of planning, we are also moving into another cross and it's it's all connected to the global cycle. But ultimately, we're letting go of the gate 61, which is occult truth. And basically what it said was, in that global cycle, we always had this option of having the truth sort of float up to the surface. It always comes and we always have access to the truth. And that's been sort of our right in the in this global cycle. But when that closes this global cycle, that right to have the truth is kind of fading away. And if you look at the gate 41 line six, this is really, you know, holding on to secrets holding on to things in detriment with Pluto in the gate 41 line six in detriment this is really holding on to secrets and holding on to things in not really telling other people so that kind of lines up interestingly enough with um the perspective of the gate 61 I, I just wanted to kind of look at Pluto in the gate 60 moving into the gate 41 and sort of looking at what are the things that that um might be showing up and ultimately you know, the only way we're really going to know is when it happens because nobody alive today has ever felt that energy. So it is monumental. But having said that, is it going to be like really impactful right in the beginning? Who knows? Um, we know that, you know, Pluto is a very slow moving planet and the changes it brings, you know, the transformative changes and um, evolution and those types of things come slowly. But of course, there's always going to be a catalyst to the shifts and changes that that will come to um, come to Earth and come to humanity. So if there's anything that I could say about this upcoming transit is the one thing is to really tap into what the energy feels like for you. What do you see in your environment? What are some clues about how it's going to be moving forward? And is it the beginning of something new, potentially? something new that begins at that particular time, and this could be personally or globally, and continues to expand and evolve as we move forward into the future. And that's a, another question. And what does it mean for humanity? What does it mean for you know our personal lives? And how does limitation look for each one of us? And can we move into this idea of a lim limitation for the common good? And, and for the common good of humanity, but also for the common good of your path forward. You know, what are the, the limitation for both humanity and the common good and limitation in our own personal lives and really directing our energy into that one thing that really matters? Because, you know, the 41 is connected to the gate 30. This is a channel of 
desire, passion, getting that one thing, that dream that you want fulfilled. And the way the gate 41 line one where Pluto will be transiting just for 2024. And then of course we'll go back in 2025 is this idea of, you know, bringing all your focus into that one thing that matters the most to you and kind of moving towards that goal, adjusting as necessary and, you know, maybe redirecting energy from this part to this part to get where you want to go, but ultimately eventually getting where you want to go because you had the resilience and the steadfastness to continue forward on your path. So this could be a time to really um, tap into some potential goals that you want to make happen going forward. And these would be big goals because it's Pluto, right? These are going to be big goals that will shift your reality. And the world might have big goals too. And if we look at the gate 31 as the opposition, this is again, you know, from a global perspective, the gate 31 is like, what are the leaders doing? Are they doing their job? And this is a question. Do we need to decrease the amount of leaders that we have? Do we have a, a you know, a top heavy leadership of people who maybe are not doing their job because there's just, there's dysfunction and maybe it needs to be trimmed back so that we will have more of a streamlined leadership because this is another perspective that we could see that we're literally wanting to trim back that energy to get the best we can from the resources that we have. So that is a little bit of a perspective of what I'm looking at for uh, Pluto moving into the gate 41. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for being here. And of course, I will be back again until next time. Take care and bye for now.